Homeostasis, it's like a super important thing. That's what we're going to learn about and more in this video. Homeostasis is the tendency for an organism or cell to maintain a constant internal environment. This does not mean that everything in our body needs to be static, but it does mean that our internal environment needs to be kept within tolerance limits for everything to function properly. Take the simple example of temperature. If our body gets too hot, our cells and enzymes start to break down and not function properly. On the other end, being too cold will also lead to cell malfunctioning and death. To remain healthy, we have to stay within a temperature threshold. Many hormones are used to control different regulated thresholds around the body. Blood sugar balance is regulated by insulin and glucagon. Both of these hormones are secreted by the pancreas. When blood sugar gets too high, pancreatic beta cells secrete insulin which sends a signal for adipose cells to take in the sugar. This will lower the blood sugar and store it as glycogen, or fat. When blood sugar gets too low, pancreatic alpha cells secrete glucagon which sends a signal to the liver to break down the stored glycogen and release it into the blood. There it can be circulated and used for energy by cells. Mistreated insulin is the cause of type 1 and type 2 diabetes. If a person has type 1 diabetes, it means that their body does not produce insulin because of a genetic factor. This is often diagnosed during childhood and requires insulin injections to maintain healthy blood sugar levels. If a person has type 2 diabetes, it means that their body has been desensitized by overusing insulin. This results in defective signaling because the body will no longer respond to insulin, which will keep blood sugar levels high. This can be controlled by managing a healthy lifestyle with diet and exercise. Body temperature is regulated by thyroxin. Thyroxin is a hormone secreted by the thyroid gland in response to signals initially derived from the hypothalamus in the brain. This hormone ultimately works to increase metabolism in the body which produces heat. If the body gets too cold, thyroxin is secreted which will increase the metabolic rate of the body and generate heat. If the body is too warm, thyroxin is inhibited which decreases the body's metabolic rate and reduces heat production to cool off. Appetite is regulated by leptin. Leptin is a hormone produced by adipose cells that suppresses appetite when it binds to receptors in the hypothalamus. Overeating causes more adipose tissue to form, which means more leptin will be secreted, lowering appetite. On the other hand, if your body is experiencing a reduction of adipose tissue through starvation periods, there is less leptin released, triggering hunger. Experiments were conducted on mice to establish a connection between leptin and obesity. During experimentation, when leptin was not produced or when it did not function properly, mice gained weight because their appetite was not controlled. These experiments were then brought to human subjects, which ultimately ended up being unsuccessful. In most human obesity cases, the subject's body becomes unresponsive to leptin, similar to type 2 diabetes, which means their appetite is hard to control. This is not a deficiency in production and cannot be treated by leptin injections. Circadian rhythms, which is a fancy phrase for sleep cycles, are controlled by melatonin. Melatonin is a hormone secreted by the pineal gland within the brain in response to changes in light. When exposed to intense light, melatonin is not produced, meaning you will remain awake. When the sun sets, melatonin is secreted, which signals to your body that it is time to sleep, making physiological changes. This is a constant daily cycle that many organisms experience. When your body is set on a cycle and you quickly move over multiple time zones, you will experience a physiological condition called jet lag. This simply means that your body's normal sleep schedule is not matched up with the current cycle of the time zone you are in. Over a few days, this will subside and your body will be accustomed to the new cycle and time zone. As a side note, bright blue light is a major suppressor of melatonin. Nowadays, many cell phone screens and computers emit bright blue light which even at night can signal to your body that you should be awake. Be sure to turn on the night light setting for all devices if they are being used after the sun goes down to maintain healthy melatonin levels.
Hormones are the key players that help the body maintain homeostasis, but that's not all they do. A few hormones also help regulate sex determination. On every male Y chromosome, there is a gene called the SRY gene. This codes for the production of a protein called the testis determining factor, or TDF. During development, this signals for male reproductive organs to be created, ultimately making the sex of the baby a male. Testes also secrete testosterone, a hormone that further promotes the development of male sex characteristics. Females do not have a Y chromosome, meaning no TDF or testosterone will be secreted. In this situation, two hormones called estrogen and progesterone promote the production of female reproductive organs and female sex characteristics. One of the earliest theories as to how animals produce sexually was the soil and seed theory proposed by Aristotle. According to this theory, the male produces a seed which forms an egg when mixed with menstrual blood. This was a popular theory for many years until it was debunked by William Harvey. Harvey tested this theory by killing and inspecting female deer in an effort to find a developing embryo within the menstrual blood. He was unable to detect an embryo until about six to seven weeks after mating had occurred, thus concluding that menstrual blood did not play a role in sexual reproduction. Some females have trouble with fertility. A possible option for them is to have their eggs fertilized in a lab and then placed back into their uterus to continue to grow to carry out a normal pregnancy. In order for this to happen, different hormones have to be turned on and off at different times for the doctors to control and extract eggs from the female. The first step of the process requires a halt of estrogen and progesterone, which allows doctors to take control of the quantity of egg production in the ovaries. This is done by specific drugs. Next, irregularly high concentrations of FSH and LH hormones are given to the female that stimulate follicle development. Because the hormone doses are higher than normal, a larger quantity of follicles are produced, which gives this stage the title of superovulation. When the follicles are large, another hormone, HCG, is injected into the woman, which stimulates them to mature. These mature eggs are extracted and mixed with sperm to be fertilized. If this is successful, the embryos are then placed back into the uterus and the pregnancy is carried out normally.